We've all heard of Davos and the World Economic Forum. That's that gab fest that takes place every January in the beautiful Swiss town of Davos. And apart from all the lovey pop stars and movie stars who jet in on their private Learjets, all sorts of major corporations and governments, including ours, send delegates to this flash red carpet economic event every year. Indeed, since the very first outsiders we hear on this show have highlighted the absurdity, hypocrisy and sheer repugnance of billionaires like Bono prattling on about the evils of capitalism. And of course, last year we had the silliness of Greta Thunberg lecturing world leaders about climate change. What a joke. Well, this week we had some good news. Maybe because they're panicking that not enough squillionaires will feel like heading out to the freezing Swiss Alps in the middle of the coronavirus, the World Economic Forum announced a couple of days ago that Davos in January has been postponed. Let's face it, it's never a good look when you're banging on about global warming and it's snowing outside. And the World Economic Forum will now take place in late spring, much warmer, in the luxury Bergenstock Resort overlooking Lake Lucerne, where the event will be hosted on both sides of the beautiful lake and glitzy delegates can be ferried across the glittering waters. How nice for them. But I wonder if there isn't more to the postponement of Davos than the weather and the virus. I wonder if perhaps certain governments and corporations are beginning to get, well, cold feet, as it were, about the next World Economic Forum. Because they certainly should be. You see, the next World Economic Forum isn't just some lovey jet setters climate gab fest. It's an anti-democratic enterprise designed to destroy your job, steal your prosperity and rob your kids of a future. It's a hardcore leftist eco horror show replete with quasi fascism. I spoke a couple of weeks ago here about the disturbing trend among many of the world's left wing elites to increasingly conflate COVID-19 with climate change, with many going so far as to suggest that all the measures applied to the coronavirus, the lockdowns, the destruction of businesses, the suppression of dissent, curfews, strong-arm police tactics, should become the new normal for dealing with climate change. And indeed, that is precisely what the next World Economic Forum is planning to do, to convince governments, with the help of big business and big tech, to bring about something deeply, deeply sinister called the Great Reset. The what? Precisely, it sounds kind of crazy enough, but it is a program designed to strip us of all our fundamental democratic rights in favour of a new form of society as dictated by the elites. First of all, here's a bit of the official promo ad for the Great Reset. Oh, lovely. As someone who made ads for many years for a living, let me tell you that that is just about as cliched and vomit-inducing as the most inane corporate ad can possibly be. But let me deconstruct it for you. In a nutshell, this promo is saying that all the very worst things in the world, from the coronavirus to bushfires to riots to pollution to poverty, are somehow linked. Then it is claiming that they can magically disappear, literally at the push of a button. And just like that, 
Everything in the world is made right and pure again. The Great Reset. What could be simpler? The World Economic Forum in January 21, which will serve as a global summit devoted to the Great Reset. This summit will bring the decision makers physically to Davos, but it will be interconnected with a virtual twin summit driven by the young generation, our global shapers. They will integrate over 400 hubs into the dialogue of Davos and ensure that the Global Reset Initiative is really forward-looking and takes into account the voices of all who are left behind. Now, put aside for the moment that that bloke looks like he's auditioning for the head of Smirsch in the next James Bond movie, he is, in fact, Klaus Schwab, the founder and head of the World Economic Forum. He is a total whack job, in my opinion, and I'll get into that in a second. He's a big fan of drones, algorithms and the Chinese Communist Party, and he believes there's a fourth industrial revolution underway that is changing what it means to be human, and he peddles this sicko fantasy that humans and machines will somehow merge in his green utopia. Bonkers, like I said, but this lunatic has some very, very powerful friends determined to push the Great Reset button along with him. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis? What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology, and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset, are fundamental to building the future we need. Ah, yes, net zero emissions, the great climate cult mantra. The Prince of Wales, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations, all determined to redesign and reimagine the entire world. What it means to be human, how money works, how political will can be enforced. And here are just a few other tasty tidbits scheduled for the Great Reset. We had already income inequality that was fueling income race, gender inequality. We have a climate emergency, which we can't walk away from. There's no doubt that the very survival of the human race requires us to act. Any recovery stimulus should have green conditions attached to it. Energy prices should reflect real costs. You need private sector capital, private sector ingenuity, private sector technology and private sector capabilities to come to the party. You need enormous trust between the private sector and the public sector for this to actually work. We have to change our economies dramatically in the next 20 or 30 years and the next 10 years is absolutely decisive. The recovery has to be greener than any of the previous recoveries. And in order to do that, we need to ensure that the stimulus package, including fiscal and monetary, are much greener. Uh, than they were before. Prince Charles insists all the levers at our disposal must be used to enforce the Great Reset. How on earth that one sentence alone does not disqualify Charles from ever succeeding to the throne is beyond me. He is now not only fully immersed in hardcore left-wing eco-politics, he is advocating some bizarre form of eco-fascism. The Queen must step in and insist he have nothing further to do with this freak show. After all, we are currently seeing in Victoria just what it looks like when all the levers at our disposal are being used to enforce 
The COVID-19 restrictions, which include curfews, lockdowns, enforced mask wearing, shutting down of businesses, making you stay within five kilometres of your own home, not visiting the dying rellos, and on and on. Remember, it's not me linking COVID to climate change. It is these lunatics, including Charles and the United Nations and the IMF, who want to replicate the global response to COVID and repurpose it for climate change to enforce zero net emissions. Just to remind you, this bloke Schwab is the kingpin of the World Economic Forum, the chief body that wants a globalised world with a partnership between government and big business, globalisation that basically runs the show. In this week's Spectator magazine, Morris Newman writes, Already, Professor Schwab and his colleagues have started mobilising vast networks of left-wing activists. Those who scoffed at claims that climate change was a stalking horse for a new world order should think again. That reality is now in full view. Intense pressure will be applied to parliaments everywhere to pass enabling laws and to abdicate more responsibilities to unelected bureaucrats in global institutions. Crony capitalism is anathema to genuine market economies and giving more leverage to those who encourage it is fascistic, says Morris Newman. Schwab has written extensively about humanity being altered by machines, nanotechnology. He's a big fan of drones, artificial intelligence. Weirdly enough, Daniel Andrews recently ditched attempts to detain people on the suspicion that they might be about to disobey COVID regulations as eerie echoes in Schwab's boasting how technologies can intrude into the hitherto private space of our minds, reading our thoughts and influencing our behaviour. And Schwab predicts, as capabilities in this area improve, the temptation for law enforcement agencies and courts to use techniques to determine the likelihood of criminal activity, assess guilt or even possibly retrieve memories directly from people's brains will increase. All of this, Schwab says, is redefining what it means to be human. Sounding like a demented character in a Batman comic, Schwab also writes gleefully that senses, memory switches and circuits can be encoded in human gut bacteria and that smart dust, arrays of full computers with antennas, can now organise themselves inside the body. Yep, this Marvel Comics whack job runs the world's most prestigious economic forum and every year... Our corporate CEOs and business leaders go grovelling to him at Davos and worse. Our government wastes your money sending senior politicians and highly paid public servants to dance to this madman's tune. It's a disgrace. Oh, and did I mention he's a huge fan of China as the leader of his brave new world? It was really appropriate to invite the president uh, to join us and uh, he, as the leader of the country, to talk to us about the future's engagement of China in global affairs and the leadership role China will assume in determining or constructing our global future. And why China? Well, apart from the drones and the surveillance, chat, chat to the Wiggers about that, they also pretend to care about climate change. And China has already taken the lead. Just look in the negotiations in Paris on the environment. Covid, China, climate change. The Great Reset is a toxic, poisonous, ugly offspring of fascism dressed up in the frilly frocks of environmentalism. It's a horror show. So what to do? Our Governor-General must insist to the Queen that Charles ceases all involvement with his travesty. The Morrison government must refuse to send any delegates to Lucerne in May and any Australian businesses that participate in this grotesquerie deserve the full wrath of Australian consumers and shareholders. But the next time someone tells us uh, that tackling climate change is either too costly or too difficult. I think we need to remind them and remind ourselves of what just is happening right now. We not only have to demand change, but also create change. We have to live up to the expectations 
which we have created, and we will do so. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs>